Hello everyone. In this session, let us understand about software routines or the interrupt service routines, which are going to get executed when an interrupt is triggered. Let us say a keyboard interrupts the CPU. When the keyboard interrupts the CPU, CPU should be able to execute the keyboard's interrupt service routine. Every device that is connected to the CPU, every I/O device rather that is connected to the CPU, has its own service routine loaded in the main memory. The moment when a device interrupts the CPU, CPU should be able to execute that respective routine. Here you can clearly see. Let us say this space. Let us look at this space. This space is dedicated to the service routine of the disk. Let us understand. This is the total main memory. This is the total main memory. You can clearly see there is a disk service routine from this location to this location. There is a printer service location, rather the printer service routine, which is available from this location to this location, and the reader service routine from this location to this location, and the keyboard service routine is available from this location to this location. This is the part of the main memory. All of the devices that are connected to the CPU have loaded their respective service routines in their respective portions of the main memory. When let us say a disk interrupts the CPU, when disk interrupts the CPU, immediately CPU should be able to execute a program that is available in this space because the disk service routine, rather disk program, rather disk software routine, whatever you call, is available. From this location to this location, let us say this location is from two hundred to. Figure pardon. This location is from two hundred to three hundred. So CPU should be able to execute all the instructions within two hundred to three hundred. The moment disk interrupts. Similarly, when the printer interrupts, CPU should be able to execute three hundred to four hundred. Let us say the printer's location. The printer's uh, main memory location is 300 to 400, in which the printer service routine, the printer's program is available. The moment printer interrupts, CPU is going to execute all the instructions in between 300 to 400. In this case, in this specific case, then which the printer's request will be serviced. That is, you are going to get a printout. Similarly, every time. When a device interrupts the CPU, CPU needs to execute that respective service routine which is loaded in the main memory in a respective place. How it is going to happen? Let us have a look at. You see the address is 0, 1, 2, 3. Have the pointers to the respective locations in which 0 is a pointer to the disk service routine, 1 is a pointer to let us say, what is this PDR? Oh, maybe, you know, PTR, printer service routine. The second location is the pointer to the reader service routine. Third location is a pointer to keyboard service routine. When the CPU gets interrupted, generally, CPU examines right from the zeroth location. Let us say, the CPU executing a program. But there comes an interrupt. CPU cannot execute that program anymore. Immediately, the CPU is going to suspend the next instruction of that specific program that is being executed. After which, CPU directly comes to address zero of the main memory. Because right from address zero, all the pointers have been written. Okay, it examines address zero, in which there is a pointer to the disk service routine. If the disk is interrupting, immediately taking this pointer. CPU is going to jump to the disk service routine after which the disk service routine will get executed. For that, CPU is going to use a special bit right after this uh, pointer. There will be a special bit. The special bit will be equal to 0 if it is not interrupting. The special bit will be equal to 1 if this device is interrupting. So, examining the special bit, it is going to either jump to the specific routine or goes to the next pointer of the next service routine. 
This is how CPU is going to examine each and every point, looking at which the CPU will be able to know which is the current device that is interrupting. Taking that specific point, CPU is going to jump to the appropriate service routine. This service routine can be called as anything. It could be a software routine or an interrupt service routine or the program that is going to service the interrupt, whatever you call. Right after the specific routine is executed, then it is said to be completely serviced. The device is said to be completely serviced. These are the software routines. Okay. Now here, CPU is executing some program. The program is, you know, 750th instruction of the program is being executed. Now the CPU has been interrupted. When the CPU is interrupted, CPU is executing 749th instruction. So it cannot execute 750th instruction at all. So it is going to save this address of the next instruction into some place in the main memory. Rather, sometimes the CPU is going to use the system stack in order to store the program counter value of the current program, which is suspended. Right after the suspension of the current program, it is going to go to the first address of the main memory because right from zeroth location onwards, there have been specific pointers written, which is going to take the CPU to the respective service routine. This is the way the CPU is going to execute the software routines or the interrupt service routines the moment an interrupt is requested, an interrupt is triggered. Thank you.